Speaker 10. Our final speaker for the night is a drag and burlesque performer, host, and comedian, and now has an album on Spotify. Please give a warm welcome to Carla Marx. All right. It's in here somewhere. Oh. Uh, they, I had to sit on the side because I can't actually sit down in this dress. <laughs> and there's stairs here and I don't know what heterosexual put them there. <laughs> stairs in a theater? Come on. All right. So that's me, Carla Marx. Usually I say that I'm Carla Marx's local faggot, but I thought I'd dress it up a little bit tonight. <laughs> I like slipping a hard faggot early in a show just to see what the straight people do. And you didn't disappoint. Every time there's someone who says, are we, that's out of order. This is all backwards, I bet. Uh-oh. Every time I do that, there's always at least one straight couple that looks at each other and says, are we allowed to say that again? No. Out of me, it's reclaiming my pride. Out of you, it's a hate crime. <laughs> Much like all of my slides being backwards. <laughs> I'm gonna kill you, Donovan. <laughs> Fuck it. So, I was gonna end by making you all cry and talking about queer love and how important it is because, wow, these are entirely out of order. <laughs> We want queer mediocrity too, okay? Queer excellence is great, but can we just dye our hair awkward colors in a bathroom for Christ's sake? Do we have to be so amazing all the time? No, I say we should be whatever Gen Z is. I don't get them. Queer partnerships are wonderful, they are amazing. They lift us up, they celebrate us. We are able to look into the eyes of our partners who fully understand and embrace us in a world that so often just chooses not to get it, who pushes us aside. And that is a spectacular joy and love in what we face. We also have queer bodies that are spectacles where we attempt to make the outside match the inside, where we find these journeys together and so often we are criticized for the decisions we make and for the health care that we have to fight tooth and nail to get to. We also have gay dogs. <laughs> this is not a mistake. I deliberately cropped the person out because this is about the dogs. <laughs> yes, they are in a heterosexual presenting relationship, but they are still gay dogs. <laughs> Let's see what we get next. Okay, pride. We like pride too. I didn't know when I came out as gay, there would be so many flags. <laughs> Nobody told me. It's really confusing. There's also a flag for trains. This is the flag for trans. Don't confuse them. <laughs> we like to tell our stories, and sometimes straight people allow us to on a big platform. <laughs> it's nice to get out of basement bars once in a while. <laughs> Telling our stories is a way that we build bridges, that we help heterosexuals understand us. And we try to understand them too. We like to read stories. Some of us read them to children. Choices. <laughs> I'm personally against all ages drag shows because I think the underage performers suck. <laughs> Honestly, they can't, even, they can't even understand the lyrics. They don't read. Back to pride. <laughs> Good. That's fun. More rainbow discussions. <laughs> this is my first image. So that's fun. <laughs> is Aston Kusher coming out later? Am I? Is this what straight people do to haze drag queens? <laughs> I feel, excuse me, I have to fire an agent. <laughs> I have to get an agent and then fire them. We like each other. This is a picture of friends because our community bonds are what keep us going. Uh, we're not sure how the straights got a hold of the term chosen family, but it actually means a lot to us. Um, I always talk about the difference between relatives 
as people who you're related to by blood, and family is an act. Family is something you choose, and for queer people, it's a rebellion, it's a political act to celebrate queer joy with each other. We do things on stage, too. We dance around. <laughs> this is a, a duo performance to Goof Troop. <laughs> and they paid us money to do it. It's art. <laughs> we hug fiercely and often. Uh, when you make a new queer friend, it is mandated that you get into a car for at least a five hour road trip and trauma dump on each other <laughs> to determine if your traumas are compatible and if yes, then you immediately fuck or become lifelong friends. <laughs> if not, you set them up with your ex. <laughs> the kids are shockingly gay. Look out. If you think this is a phase, if you think this is something you can get by without understanding, no. <laughs> I don't know what Gen Z's doing, but they like it. And every time you misgender them, they come up with two new pronouns. So <laughs> be careful. Oh, we're back to the start again. That's fun. <laughs> We chose the rainbow for a particular reason. We want to be visible, but visibility without rights is a double-edged sword. It means that we become a target and that our health care, our lives can be taken from us. We must not convince ourselves that the hatred towards the trans and non-binary and queer communities will stay south of the border. This year, in the first five days alone, they filed 128 pieces of legislation. Today, they debated criminalizing bathrooms in Utah. Every day, another piece of legislation comes to take my friend's life, Eva, away from her. I have friends who have become refugees because they can't get health care anymore. They can't change the gender markers. They're not allowed to go to bathrooms, things like that. This war, this genocide, this attempt to erase simple people trying to enjoy some goddamn ice cream <laughs> is here, and we must not allow hate to fester. It's called the tolerance paradox, and that's what I want to leave you with. Tolerance of intolerance does not create a tolerant society. We must combat hate, and I need all of you to do it, because there's just one of me. There's a lot of you. So thank you so much. Uh, I guess I'm done. <laughs> Neat.